we got lots of big things to talk about in your life. We got a brand new box set, a little bit of a tour coming up. But before we get into all that good stuff, I thought it might be fun to take it back to the very beginning. Could you talk a little bit about what initially made you fall in love with making music in the first place? Yeah, um, it it was it was a life path that I wasn't expecting. It really caught me by surprise. I was really into film when I was in high school and I was actually enrolled to go to school to be a film editor. And I took a gap year before and was home in Brunswick working at the local video store there. And um, I was just going through a bit of a rough time. I was 18 years old. So, you know, I had a lot of big emotions and I wrote a lot of poetry at the time. So I, just started experimenting with a guitar after hours at my after my shift and um, writing songs in real time. And I realized instantly that it was fu fulfilling me in a way that I just would could never have expected. And so I ended up just pursuing it um, and committing my life to it, basically in that moment. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. And here we are today. Flash forward to now. That's yeah. wild. It must be all a blur. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's crazy looking back and seeing just I'm proud of myself for being so young and, and being um, courageous enough to just kind of not know what what I was getting into and to just go for it anyway. Yeah. And I'm lucky enough to have built a career by by that first decision when I was young. Absolutely. Well, so glad that you did. And another thing we love about you is you are a New England gal through and through, born in New Hampshire, raised here in Maine. How would you say being from New England has influenced your sound, if at all? I would say that, like, inspirationally, it has influenced me deeply. Um, my dad was in the Air Force, so we lived away from Maine for a while uh, in the you know in my childhood and I never had that sense of a place of uh, of of you know of, of that feeling of home um, and both my parents are from Maine and all my extended family is there so I just had all these stories and you know while we were living far away in the desert or in Europe and was longing for that that feeling of home and so when I finally moved back when I was 14 I just immediately felt like it was the first time that I was really had found my place um, and I'm so grateful to that. I think that it inspired everything that I then went on to do artistically. Absolutely. New England does have that home feeling. Maybe it's just because you and I have been lucky enough to spend so much time here, but there yeah. really just is something about it. Maybe it's the seasons. I don't know, but it's special. <laughs> It is so special, yeah. You lightly touched on the video store job that you had when you were in Brunswick, but I wanted to talk about Bart and Greg's just a hair more because unfortunately they did close back in 2017, but I feel like you had such a unique experience there and with that store. Can you talk a little bit more about what it was like working there? Yeah, it was honestly the most formative time of my life like when I would have been in college I made that decision to pursue music so I worked at the store for four years and it was like this exact four years I would have been in undergrad so um, my life consisted of movies and music and that was it and it was in um, it was right in downtown um, on Main Street and so it was really the it was such a community spot like I truly everyone in town rented there and everyone was like in solidarity against streaming when that was coming up. And it was really a gathering place. I made friends there. Like I just talked about film and art all day with customers. And um, that was, you know, how my moniker came about because everybody in town knew who I was. And so when I started doing music, I wanted to remain a little anonymous and not have it traced back to me, which is why I used Lady Lamb. It was just that close knit of a, of a community. Um, and I worked the closing shift. So I stored my gear there and would drag it out after hours and, and stay there all night sometimes. And then, you know, basically sleep all day and do it again. And it was a really, um, it was just a really rife time for me for, for inspiration and, and self-expression. 
That is so cool. It's very special to have a situation like that where maybe in the moment you didn't realize how formative it was going to be for your whole life and career. Yeah. And here we are. That's super Yeah, cool. absolutely. <laughs> you Yeah. mentioned your moniker, so I wanted to talk about Lady Lamb a bit. Now, you used to go by Lady Lamb, the beekeeper. What inspired the shortening and just the name in general? Well, when I was 18 and started, when I was starting to write, I was keeping a dream journal by my, my by my bed. And I was doing a lot of um, writing lyrics in the middle of the night because I was so inspired. And Lady Lamb, the beekeeper was something that was actually just written in my notebook one night. Um, I, I looked in the notebook the next day and it was there and I had no recollection of writing it down. And it was right around the time when I had enough songs to put on a CD and share with the town so um i put i put the a little stack at the bull moose next part of the video store and um and in about it, it was shortly after the moniker i started with the moniker that i was like you know what this is so meaningful to me but it's really long it's really long and it takes up a lot of space and it's hard to remember and really shortly after that I felt more connected to the first half of it, but I felt like it was too late to change it. And then I officially did in like 2014 or so. Um, but I have a really soft spot in my heart for fans who remember me back then. Yeah. Um, and I'm even like bringing back some throwback merch for touring this year that says Lady Lamb the Beekeeper. I love for the ones who know. <laughs> yes, Allie, if you know, you know. So I went to Humane Farmington and it was before 2014. I'm aging myself, but I remember when I was there, you performed there with the yes. full name. So that had stuck with me. And that's just wild how it does stick with you through the years. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Especially for Mainers. <laughs> yes, 100%. This year is a very special year for you. The 10th anniversary of your debut, Ripely Pine what inspired that album for you at that time 10 years ago um what inspired me was just a lot of of heartache a lot of um really just big feelings like the feelings we all have when we're confused and young and figuring it out and um trying to understand the world around us and um at the time I was really really into to a lot of indie bands that I discovered in high school like Neutral Milk Hotel who writes lyrics that are really surreal and kind of off the wall but very cinematic and visual and so I was really inspired to write in a lot of metaphor and I would say the lyrics are quite surreal and to this day I listen back I'm having to listen back to practice for the shows I have coming up and and I'm just like I'm I'm honestly like I feel removed from it in a way in like a beautiful way I'm like I can't believe how young I was when I wrote these songs like some of them I'm still learning from today wow. um yeah, just a lot of big feelings. <laughs> yes, I wonder too if maybe some of those songs take on a new meaning now that we're 10 years later and we feel different things. It's still really yeah. yeah, absolutely. I feel like they're the gift that keeps on giving. Like I still enjoy performing them. Um, I, I'm like, I feel tenderness towards like the people that I was singing about in them and I'm still close to. And yeah, it's just, it's like so thrilling to have had this record with me for 10 years and it for it to have affected people in a way that is so visceral and I'm really excited to celebrate it again. Yes, yeah, so exciting. How would you say you have evolved as an artist over the past 10 years? I would say like when I was younger, I was really afraid of being pigeonholed. I was really um, insecure about um, coming out publicly. I felt like it was a really hard time to be queer and be out in, in the industry. And I think that over time, and cause I came out when I was 15. So over time, I've just like um, felt more secure with like being myself outwardly, like, you know, publicly and also being more direct in my music instead of like kind of coding things or saying things in roundabout ways, I've tried to become more direct. Yeah. So that's a beautiful thing, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, and I think that's just part of growing up, you know, and evolving and maturing, too. Absolutely. Well, flash forward to today, we got multiple albums under your belt. Tell me all about the box set that you just released, fresh and new. <laughs> box set is a huge whopping five pounds, pretty much. It's like 35 songs. It's Ripely Pine Remastered. 
um, which is exciting. It starts the record. So what's cool for that is like for people discovering me, they're re they're able to discover Ripley Pine again as as if it's brand new. Um, but I also spent about a year and a half recording new 23 new recordings for it. Um, and I produced the whole record myself. Um, I wrote a lot or I wrote and recorded a lot of it in my apartment in New York and um, and also at my house in Maine. And um, it is a few songs that are new versions or live versions of songs from Ripley Pine. So I took a banjo song and turned it into a piano song. And I took Bird Balloons, which is like a big banger and I made it more introspective and and a solo acoustic song um and then also it's a handful of songs that um were never properly released that fans especially fans from New England would remember from me performing them when I was just starting out in 2009 or 10 so um I've been carrying around a lot of these Lady Lamb songs for many years and they haven't had a proper home I have an acapella song called Up in the Rafters one called Between Two Trees that a lot of fans would recognize and I still play to this day, but they could never really find them online unless they were, it was like in a live a YouTube video or something. So this box set is a way to give a home to all these loose songs that we're looking for a place. Um, it feels like it's ni a nice chapter closing. Like it's for me, I made this whole box set as a thank you to my fans um, for just being with me all these years. Oh, that's a great gift for your fans. I know they're appreciating it. And as you were going through some older songs, putting this together, did you find any songs that maybe hit different for you or you rediscovered it as a favorite of yours? Yeah, for sure. I even just in listening back to Ripley Pine to, you know, talk about having it remastered and everything. There were there are a couple underdog songs on that record that I, I heard back and I was like, oh, my God, that is that is a hit. Like I have a song rooftop, but that song is amazing. I'm, I like, I'm going to be playing it again live. Like I, I never play it live, you know, things like that. Like song mezzanine is another one songs that I've just, that I've kind of, you know, have fallen away from in my life a little bit. Um, and then also just recreating new versions of bird balloons and regarding ascending the stairs from the record, um, spun the lyrics in a new light that I felt really newly connected to them. Um, so as much as I feel like I, I felt the uh, motivation to make this box set for my fans, like in gratitude, I have, it has been a gift for me as well mm -hmm. to just like reconnect me to my younger self and to just kind of, you know, look back on where, you know, where I came from and, and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Well, speaking of connecting to your younger self, you're definitely connecting to a younger audience on TikTok as well, because you have a track, Dear Arkansas Daughter, that is having its moment, Allie, on TikTok. <laughs> Take me through that moment where you found out this song has gone viral on TikTok now. I so I have a fan in Cleveland on TikTok. So I opened a t TikTok recently um, and haven't been super active on it. Um, and my my experience with TikTok is really just my my like younger brother sending me the funny stuff, you know, so um, I basically like saw this video that I was tagged in through a really like a fan of mine who's been with me for a long time. And she was like, I've seen enough of these videos now that I'm worried Allie's gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be able to get a ticket to her show in Cleveland. And I was like, Hey, rebel, what do you mean? What, what, what do you mean? Of course, you'll, you know, and she was like, let me explain it to you. And I had no idea. So um, that it was a complete whirlwind. So yeah, a song of mine from 2015 has been, you know, making the rounds on TikTok. And what is so amazing to me about it, it's because it's a strange thing. It's just completely out of my control. Like for, for months and months, I wasn't even credited. So like, pe pe so people weren't even, didn't even know what it was that they were using. Um, but what is so brilliant to me is that my dream for this box set, which I would literally preach to anyone who would listen is for my dream is for, for younger people to find ripely pine because i was 18 17 19 when i wrote it and i just i've been like i've been feeling so deeply in my soul like this record deserves an, a second light shown on it and an opportunity for young people to find it because this music they're going to connect to so much so what was so amazing about this tiktok thing happening is that all these young people were finding the song which in turn they were following me on spotify which means that the day that my box set started streaming they were all getting a notification for it and what does what is the first song on that box set it's the first song on ripley pine 
so I felt like my my actual dream is like coming true and it's just it's truly just for people with big feelings who are young people to fit, find these songs yes. um so I I couldn't be happier about it that is crazy how meant to be that was because what better way yeah. to get your music in front of young people than TikTok right now that was so much the timing was the timing was insane because with TikTok that started around mid June and the box set started streaming three weeks later. So it, it just it could not have gone better. Oh, I love that for you, Allie, and for all the younger people who are going to get to enjoy that because you know Thank they will you. connect to it. The feelings are the same, even though times are a changing. Some right. things remain the same. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. Well, you're going to be celebrating 10 years of Ripley Pine with us here at the State Theater. That is September 23rd is your show here. What can fans expect from this live show in particular? So this is, I cannot stress enough, the most special Lady Lamb show that has ever happened in you know, ever, probably because um, we're playing Ripley Pine front to back. I have a huge band on stage with me. We're 12 people. So we've got a string quartet. We've got saxophones, trumpet, trombone. Um, and we're we're playing every song for the first time ever as it was arranged. Because this this was a really ambitious record when I was 23. You know, I, I layered a lot of instrumentation on it that I couldn't actually realistically perform. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're finally performing the record just like you've you've always heard it with all the parts um and then we're performing a handful of songs from the box set as well um so it's going to be a huge party it's going to be so fun and i feel like it's going to also be very emotional i'm going to be up there even my drummer who's been playing with me almost 10 years he was like ali i'm going to be crying up there i hope that's okay i don't even know if i can handle hearing these songs with with strings for, you know for the first time and i was like i'm right there with you derek like it's going to be really beautiful Oh, that's going to be emotional for everyone in the house. And do you find that it feels maybe a little extra special to performing in Maine since you spent so much time here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's there's not a city in the country that is more important to me to come home and play. You know, the last show that I had at State Theater, my mom was in the crowd and I got to walk out and sing a song with my arm around her. Oh um, you know, like it's, oh, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> It's so great. Like I came up playing this. <laughs> I came up playing Space Gallery. Like it's it's really special. I I can't stress it enough. I love coming home. Oh, we love having you home, Allie. Are your parents gonna make it to this show in September? Do you think? Yeah, my like favorite aunts flying in from Chicago. Like all my aunts, my uncles will be there. My siblings, like my parents. Like yeah, it's gonna be really great. And also just a lot of fans whose faces I recognize from the last. 15 years absolutely oh that's i'm sure you can tell it's just it's meaningful absolutely Allie. what's your sign i gotta know are you a cancer cancer yeah i of are. course right yes oh, oh, well, of happy, course i'm a cancer yeah i just happy have earlier birthday. belated belated july 6th oh that's awesome <laughs> we love a cancer and you should feel all those emotions this is a big deal and i love that this is happening for you last Thank but certainly you. not least ali here in the state of maine as you probably know our state motto is the way life should be so i would like to know according to you what is the way life should be oh that's beautiful um to me the way life should be is um having integrity having integrity for yourself like not um not comparing yourself to others and keeping your eyes on your own paper just st knowing that you have your path and that everything in your life takes the time it's going to take and it's separate from somebody else's path that's like my the advice that I tell myself all the time and honestly I think living in Maine living in Maine and experiencing the beauty of the state of Maine is is literally the way life should be. So I love coming home. I'm coming home in like a week to just go sit in the trees and and, and vibe with it. And um, yeah, I think that um, just yeah, that's that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that quote, keep your eyes on your own paper, because it sometimes can be harder than it sounds. But that's so important. Everyone's timeline is so different. And it's easy with social yeah. media now and other things to yeah. lose touch of that. But you're it's really that simple. Right. Just focus on you. 
Yeah, and 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 just yeah, exactly. Yes, oh, everything Allie. in its own time. Absolutely, I'm glad your timeline is working out the way it is. It's so awesome to chat <laughs> with you, and we can't wait to see you in September. What a pleasure to speak with you too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Allie. Until we meet again.